Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're working in governance, risk and compliance and the main software that you use all day long is Microsoft Excel, then this video is for you. I'm about to tell you that in 2026 and beyond, governance, risk and compliance is all about automation and speed, where companies, they want access to real-time APIs for automating the entire process of governance, risk and compliance. CISOs, they want access to real-time dashboards not just you know reports which are like uh, behind two or three months behind the environment which is there and this is where the whole concept of grc engineering comes in which i've talked about many many times before that how grc is changing in this uh, cloud first and this ai first world and what you can do to upskill yourself so in this video i want to talk about what are the essential toolkits that you need what are the software that you need to know to become a GRC engineer and how you can go about getting it. Most of, like you don't need to buy any expensive software, any expensive courses. You can get started with zero cost right now. So let's get started. If you're new to the channel, my name is Tamur Lal. I'm a senior security consultant with AWS. I've been in cyber security for over 20 years and I made this channel to give advice on, you know, things like cloud security, AI and general career advice. So please do like and subscribe to this channel and let's get started. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Basically, the GRC Engineers Toolkit for 2025 and beyond. How to get from compliance to code, right? And this is where the mind shift thing is coming. If you've seen my other previous videos, I'll link them also. But basically, traditional GRC, like it used to happen 10, 15 years ago, it was all about documentation, right? Confluence, Microsoft Excel, PDF, Word. We used to have checklist where you would go and get screenshots, get APIs, uh, endless, endless, endless Microsoft Excel, which were given to the auditors. But as companies are moving towards this very hyper-fast, cloud-first, AI-first world, th this model simply does not work anymore. It it might help you pass an audit, but it, it gives no value to the company where literally environments are changing every day, right? So this is where the concept of GRC engineering comes in, where you apply the same concepts of engineering to a governance risk and compliance world where you use things like APIs, automation, scripting to quickly, quickly get a, a snapshot of the organization's environment where evidence is collected automatically, where you put in controls within the policy themselves. So this is where GRC engineering comes in and where GRC engineering can help provide value to the company. And this is going to be a very, very uh, essential skill set in the future. So. Uh, this is where a, a lot of people ask me this question also that hey what do i need okay i get it grc engineering is awesome what do i need to get started but what is the minimum skill set and tooling that i need to get started and th this is what this video is all about first thing i want to stress is that you do not need to buy any expensive software anybody who comes to you and he says that hey buy my 500 dollar uh, tool and you will implement grc engineering that's complete bogus you do not need to get this and most importantly, there is no such thing as a right time. A lot of people tell me that I need to know XYZ programming language and then I can start GRC engineering. No, you can get started right now, today. Nothing is stopping you. And then slowly, slowly upskill yourself, okay? So please do not like... Uh, so, so please do not just delay it for the sake of delaying and get started right now. The first thing is, and this is very, very important. A lot of people, what they do is, Without knowledge of governance frameworks, they just jump into GRC engineering with, from a technical background. If you have, you must have knowledge of frameworks, right? Things like ISO, NIST, SOC 2, because that is the whole point of becoming a GRC engineer. You already know the frameworks. You want to apply them within the environment, right? Otherwise, you're just, a, you're just a software engineering. You just know engineering. You have no idea about governance, risk, and compliance. So this is the first mistake that I see people make. They just jump into uh, learning about uh, engineering principles or automation or scripting. Please, first of all, get a good handle of the frameworks. You do not need to memorize frameworks. I have videos on this. You know how to get into governance, risk, and compliance. Take one standard. You know, like NIST, like PCI DSS, like ISO or SOC type 2 and get any case study, any company who has a case study on how they implemented it. That will teach you much, much more about the standard. Nobody expects you to memorize the standard. I have been in governance risk and compliance for over 15, 20 years. I have half of the standards. I have no idea which which clause is means what. I have to always go and look at it because I haven't memorized it. Right. That's not the point of governance risk and compliance. So please get a knowledge of a framework first and then apply it to. GRC engineering. So once you have this, once you have like chosen a standard like PCI DSS or something, move to the next step, which is get a cloud platform. Please, 
GRC engineering was built for the cloud first world, right? Because cloud environments are so fast. AI platforms are being hosted on cloud platforms only. So you can you cannot govern what you don't understand, right? Otherwise, you will always be dependent on the cloud team, on the IT team for your evidences. So you need to understand how the cloud model works, how compliance IAM works within the cloud. That means getting a basic idea of things like AWS config, control tower, or maybe Azure policy, cloud defender, uh, GCP security command center. Uh, just you literally do not need to buy anything. You have things like the AWS free tier. They give you, I think they've changed recently the free tier. Now you get $200 in credits within that two hundred dollars you can play around with any aws sandbox right just go and sign up you have azure google all of them give you this free alternative so why not use it otherwise you will always be behind just log into your cloud set up a cloud sandbox log into it find out how users work find out how auditing works how the audit trail works just get a basic understanding do not be completely ignorant about the cloud you need to at least choose one platform be it AWS, be it Azure, be it Google Cloud. I'm biased, I work in AWS, so I just like AWS more, but you do not have to be restricted to it. And then at least you will have a sandbox now to understand how it works. Uh, the next step is learning a little bit of scripting via Python. Python is uh, like your secret weapon when it comes to GRC engineering, because it allows you to quickly query the cloud and get evidences. Nobody is going to be going to the click ops, you know, through the screen and getting screenshots one by one. That used to work like 15 years ago. You need to know a little bit of scripting to quickly query the environment and get all the evidences that you need. You know, things like ISO or PCI DSS or SOC 2, you need to be able to query the cloud environment. So just learn a little bit of basic Python. Like I said, you do not need to know in-depth coding. First of all, this is the first thing. If you're getting like a panic attack that, oh my God, I need to become a programmer. No, I'm going to tell you why. But at least know a little bit of Python, basic stuff. You know, how what Python looks like, how to write a simple hello world command, how to connect to a cloud environment like using credentials, those sort of things. I'm, and so you're not completely illiterate when it comes to Python. But like I said, very, very important. You do not need to know in-depth coding. Nobody is expecting you to write 10,000 lines of code, right? But you need to be able to know how to connect to a cloud environment, uh, how to be able to query it through APIs. That is the thing that you should know at least. Moving on from there, the next step is infrastructure as code. Now scripting through Python, it tells you what the environment is. Infrastructure as code. It allows you to build the environment already compliant. So when the organization is deploying uh, resources, infrastructure as code is basically where you can bolt on your controls right from the start, you know, using things like Terraform, cloud formation. You can actually tell them these are the, this is the template that you need to have when it comes to your servers, to your IAM, to your file storage, things like S3 buckets and all that, that they they will be compliant right from the start. So this is, like I said, this is the difference between we should encrypt storage and unencrypted storage cannot exist because you will already have codified that control right from the start. And again, you do not need to know in-depth coding. You do not need to know JSON, like memorize how JSON for formats look. Because Just know what a simple Terraform template looks like. Once you have a cloud sandbox, just write a, try to write a simple Terraform or a cloud formation template, see how it looks like, deploy a simple user using Terraform or deploy a simple server or a file storage using infrastructure as code so that you have the ability to at least understand these two things. So scripting via Python infrastructure as code. And now, so why was I saying you do not need to know in-depth coding? Well, this is where this distinct concept comes in, which is wipe coding. Now, wipe coding is honestly a massive, massive game changer for GS engineers. If you're not familiar with wipe coding it is nowadays that uh, ai agents have come in which can write like most of the code for you and it, it can explain the code for you there has been a lot of backlash against wipe coding and uh, some of it is justified also because what happened was when wipe coding came along everybody was saying oh now nobody needs software engineers we can write all the code ourselves and honestly wipe coding does not work when you are trying to write massive amounts of huge amounts of programs you know because simply because a lot of bugs are there and you have spent more time trying to debug this logic but wipe coding is excellent for grc engineering because wipe coding is very very suited for writing small snippets of code which is exactly what we need for grc engineering so now you can write like simple python scripts simple terraform and th th this is where people goof up they just write the code without understanding it you can actually tell wipe coding to explain 
the entire code to you step by step what it's working how it's working and debug it for you so this is really a game changer for geos engineers so wipe coding where you can use ai you need to understand this you can literally tell it what you want to do it will do it and it will explain it to you but always remember only someone who understands governance principles and technical context can validate that the output is correct because you are, this is what I said right from the start. You need to have knowledge of governance like NIST or PCI DSS. Otherwise, you won't understand the output, right? So this is where, honestly, this is where your sweet spot is, that you're bridging compliance reasoning with AI-driven execution. You don't need to buy, invest in any expensive tools. We have things like Amazon has just released Amazon Kiro. They have Cursor. I don't want you to be logged down to any tool like all of these are you have things like q developer i use q developer quite a bit it's awesome so please just download any vibe coding tool and start playing around with it just write simple code you download a simple vibe coding tool like uh, uh, kiro or q developer write a simple script through python in your aws sandbox that or your azure or a google sandbox write simple infrastructure as code and you will be ahead of the vast majority of people who are trying to learn geos engineering that that's the whole thing i'm trying to tell you that you do not need any fancy tools do not wait for certifications to come along i'm sure in one year two year you will be saying the certified geos engineering blah 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 no need to wait for that you can start right now as of today nothing is stopping you so i hope you've understood now that like the future of geos engineering like i've said in the next two to three years many many companies will be looking for this that people who can uh, implement GRC within their engineering workflows. AI will be handling all the ground level work, but it is human beings, GRC engineers, who will be defining the compliance rules, the ethics, contacts, and risk boundaries. This is going to be a very, very hot career, I can guarantee you, because every all the companies that are coming up now, they usually, you know, uh, AI startups, cloud startups who are using the leveraging the power of AI, they do not have time for people to be, you know, taking screenshots and 500 page Excel spreadsheets, all of it has to be automated. So this is where the sweet spot comes in of GRC engineering. If you still need help, uh, I've, I, if I've told you before, I've launched an academy. Thank you to the, all the people who have tried, who supported me in this. And I'm launching a course also on GRC engineering in November 2025. I'll put the link. You can check that out. Do you need this course to become a GRC engineer? No, absolutely not. You can, Like I said, you can use the things I've told you. Get started. I just made it to make it more easier for people who want a little bit of more hand-holding, you know, setting everything up, uh, running like real-world examples, real-world coding. So if you want a little bit of a jump start, please. But like I said, no, uh, no commitment here. You do not, this is not like a mandatory thing you need to know for GRC engineering. So I hope you've understood what you need to do to get started with GRC engineering. Get started today. Do not delay it. Uh, I hope this video is useful to you. Please do like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.